Hi guys, today we're going to try doing something a little bit different. We're going to do almost like a little documentary showing you how we install an audio system in a BMW. So, as you know, if you follow our videos, we're really into our BMW audio upgrades. We've got three BMW um, demo cars now. We've got an X5, we've got a 4 Series, we've got an older M3 as well, an E46. So, we, we take it pretty seriously and we've invested into it. Um, we perform literally hundreds and hundreds of BMW audio upgrades. We reckon we've done over 800 now. They're all done in a similar fashion. Things have evolved slightly as we've gone on. But what I'm gonna to do today is take you through a very short video. It's the first time we tried this, so excuse the editing and the camera work. It, it, it's not a professional video, but it's quite factual, so we hope it's gonna help. So some of the products that we use in the BMW installation would be these Alderson subwoofers. These are the subwoofers. We used to use an earthquake subwoofer. We replaced it with the Alderson now. We now truly believe it's considerably better. It's a better sounding subwoofer. It's also, will take a lot more stick, so that's why we've upgraded to the Aldersons. Um, we use a focal mid-range and tweeter, so from the ES range, so it's the ES100K, this is a mid-range, it's a beautiful little speaker as you can see, it's incredibly well made. It's really difficult to fit into a BMW. There's far easier solutions out there, but the reason why we stick with a speaker, we believe it's the best. If we find something better, we change. Um, it falls into a price point where it works really well. It represents good value, good sound quality. Um, they never ever fail. That's also very important for us because our customers come from a long way away. The actual car I'm going to take you through in a moment is a BMW 5 Series that came away from Switzerland. So typical example of how, car, how far our customers often travel. Um, this is the tweeter that comes with a component set. Again, it's really awkward to install. So sometimes we'll buy the factory grills, the little um, tweeter sections, but that's not practical every time. Some vehicles are over 150 pounds and everyone wants to pay that premium. So, you know, on say a, an F33 series or an F10 5 series, we just include the panels because they're not expensive. Other vehicles will give the customer the option of having these flushed in. Um, they look really good when they're done. You, you'll see them in a moment in the video. Um, here's a crossover. This is, this is part of the focal set. We installed it in the door. Um, you'll never see it once it's in there, but in a moment you'll see how we actually install it and where it goes. I'll just show you quickly the amplifier and the DSP which we use in our upgrade system. So this is the JL Audio amplifier that we use. We either use a three channel or we use a five channel. Um, kind of depends on what the customer's opted for, whether we're going for hi-fi coding, whether the car started life with Harman Kardon or advanced audio, whether it's just a basic upgrade. Um, so there's a three channel amplifier, incredibly compact. Um, three channels of power there, two by 75 watts, one by 300, and in the five channel, four by 75, one by 300 for the base. Um, most of our systems will, if we call them a plus, that means they've got an Audison Bit 10 DSP. Um, this is used for time alignment and tuning the system to the car. Also gives us much better crossovers within there. So without further ado, let's go through to the workshop and we'll show you step by step how we carry out the installation. I hope you enjoy. So one of the really important factors when installing the front components is the soundproofing inside the door. Uh, it's very, very important. Every single installation we carry out would always soundproof inside the door. As you can see here, uh, Jerry's working hard to complete that in his X5. So he's dropped down the water membrane. He's now inside the door and he's heated up sheets of soundproofing. He's now using a roller to press it tight against the outer skin of the door so there's no air behind it. So it's working effectively. That's quite an important stage of the door preparation. In this particular installation, the customer's opted for us to flush the tweeters into the ape of the trims there, or uh, window sail, should we say. So it's a really neat look. We actually strip the tweeter down, cut the hole from the back, refinish it past the grill halfway through, then reassemble the tweeter from behind. In this particular X5, which is an F15, the new OEM panels are well in excess of 150 pounds, so most customers tend to opt for this. It's a great look. In the back of the X5, you can see here the JL Audio 500 free amplifier, which is a class D amp. And underneath that, you can see the Audison Bit 10D. What you can't see really clearly is the MDF panel, which has been fabricated to support the two devices. This has gone back in on the original fixings, it's something we always try and do. We really try very hard to avoid any drilling inside the vehicle or anything like that. The cabling is roughly in place at the moment, it's supported with these cable ties. Everything is being tessa taped, as you can see, which is this cloth tape which resembles the factory wiring. I'll show you a little bit further along when we get towards the end of the installation. I think we'll put the cable tied back and very, very neat. Um, the main power fuse is going in at the moment as well. So we run a four gauge cable straight to the battery of the fuse here to protect it. 
and we use all stinger cabling for the power side and speaker side. So it's very, very neat. I'll come back to this a little bit further on through the install. Over here on the bench, Henry is installing the Alderson woofers into the original BMW enclosures. Now, generally, it's a pretty straightforward job, actually, not in the X5. It takes a little bit of manipulation. You've got to carry out some alterations around here. Um, but once it's all done, it'll be very nicely sealed. A little bit of modification here, but we keep the most of the grill intact. And the nice thing about the Alderson woofer is it actually got its own grill anyway, so no dust or grit or anything like that can pass through and vibrate on the cone. Um, as Henry completes, he'll be putting little bits of damping and stuff in here, so when it all goes back together, I think it seals really nice and there's no vibration. So that's how the Alderson look, woofers look. He's, here are the original BMW woofers. So they're pretty flimsy looking things, as you can see, compared with the Aldersons. Much better driver, much better sounding, more bass, more power handling, more accurate. A good upgrade. So here is the um, F15 door card on the bench. Um, so we're preparing them at the moment. So I've just moved this one out of the way. I'll show you what they look like from behind. So as you can see, be very careful not to damage the door cards because they're full lever in this vehicle but as you can see every bit of the back of the door card is completely covered in skins in this case we use a combination of skins and dynamite whichever is more appropriate both work exceptionally well um, that should give you an idea of the amount of time that's taken to prepare these door cards it literally takes four or five hours just to install a set, a set of front components in an x5 moving across to the right hand side on this side, we're just assembling the um, speaker. So the baffle has been made completely from scratch. It's solid MDF. It's sealed to the door card, and then we create this seal, sorry, it's still sealed to the actual door. And then we create this second seal, which seals it to the back of the door card. So it's very, very neat. As you can see, everything's been covered in skins in this installation. Here's the passive crossover down the bottom of the door. Very important to make sure the crossovers are always mounted on the dry side of the membrane. I've seen lots of cars come in where the crossovers are tucked up in here. That's a complete no-no. As you can see, all the cabling is loomed in tesser tape. It's then hot glued in position, so nothing can distort or vibrate. It's very, very important. And this door, if I'm not mistaken, is pretty close to having the door card refitted. We'll come back to that. So here we are back around the back end of the car and um, the electrical installation is now complete. So, as you can see, the amplifiers that we looked at earlier, or the amplifier and the processor are now very, very neat. Everything has been completely tesser taped and then held in place with cable ties. So the loom follows the factory loom of the car. We'd always try and do this. We don't want wires just running here, there and everywhere. In case anybody else has to look into the car or work in it for any reason, we want all of our work to be to a factory standard which I think if you look at that, you'll see it most definitely is to a factory standard. Because in this installation, we're using the Alderson Bit 10D, it comes with the DRC controller, and this customer has specified it like it mounting in the ashtray. So to achieve this nicely, we're gonna fabricate an MDF mount, which would be a three-dimensional affair. It'll be textured and painted, and it'll look like it grew there. I'll show you when it's a little bit further along. So we're just coming towards the final part of the installation now. The DRC controller has been mounted in on a little custom plinth, which you can't see too well. And we're just beginning the final setup of the System 3 Plus. So at this point, we'll be checking the phasing of the speakers, setting all the crossover frequencies, and then the final stage will be tuning of the system right at the very end. And that's it. Final tune complete. Car sounding amazing. And now it's on its way or just about to leave and head all the way back to Switzerland. I hope you've enjoyed this short video. So there you go guys, I hope you've enjoyed that. It's the first of our how-to video guides showing how we install the system. Um, the way we did that today is the way we do every single install. It's not something we just done just for the camera. Um, if you've enjoyed it, give us a follow on YouTube, maybe give the video a like. We post lots of this stuff, or as much as we can. We try and make it as interesting as possible. All our videos are quite factual. So there you go. If you fancy a demo of one of the BMWs we have here, just give us a call, drop us an email, um, website www.audiofile-incar.co.uk, and there's a, quite a detailed description of the upgrades within that site. Thanks for watching.